Hey, what's up guys? Um, as you see, this is the photo that I was given um, for a client to kind of mimic, and then this is what I ended up actually making for them. So I have a whole bunch of hickory um, sitting in my shop right now um, that I want to use up. And wasn't sure how it would look, but it actually turned out really nice, and I was able to embrace um, a lot of the knots and character in the wood um, when putting it all together. Um, it really came out nice. I'm using my new Bora parallel clamps that I got. Um, I have noticed they're not as nice as the Bessie ones um, for being square, um, but they do work. It's nice having a set of four that are all the same height when doing a larger glue up like this. And it actually glued up pretty, pretty square and flat, which I was happy with. Because I don't have a drum sander, which is on my list of things that I want, but don't necessarily need. And just a little high spot there that I pinned down. Always nice getting your hand tools out. And I still have yet to make a permanent handle for my tail vise. Kind of my first attempt at using epoxy to fill knots. I did try and use a hair dryer to get the bubbles out, but I wasn't quite as diligent on that as I probably should have. So you really have to do it every like probably quarter inch of fill or less. Um, but I just did it at the end after I filled it all, and it probably wasn't enough. So there's still a couple bubbles in it, um, but it looks pretty good. This is where a drum sander would come in handy. The belt sander works pretty good. It did leave, you know, slight indentations here and there. Um, but overall, pretty good. It would just be a lot quicker with a drum sander. The total dimensions of the top were 47 by 17. I took that picture because it was the first time I actually got to utilize that feature of the workbench. And I did use the hand plane instead of the jointer because of the grain orientations. I felt like the jointer would just tear the wood out. And here I'm just cutting down to final width. Up my circular saw guide. Works pretty good. It's probably not as nice as a shot belt one. I sanded down the epoxy. Um, I did take the epoxy to a higher grip because I wanted it to be a clear finish as opposed to being cloudy on top. So when I did hand sand it, I hand sanded it down probably I think it went to a thousand grit. Looks like good. I just round over the top a little bit. And then I finished up with a little hand sanding on the top. And then you'll see me hand sanding the epoxy spots. Just so I could get a nicer clear finish there. There's a lot of sand in. Here I'm touching up the epoxy. Always fun to get to this stage. This is the bottom. I did the bottom and then I flipped it over. I think I did two coats on the bottom and then 
probably four or five coats on the top since it will get some decent use. I used water locks. It's really nice having those painter tripod thingies. They make doing um, finishing a lot easier. I wasn't sure how the oil would lay on top of the epoxy, uh, but it, it did good, even though it's not like soaking into that area. I wasn't sure if I wanted to wax finish or just use like a rub finish. So I actually did the rub finish and then figured, uh, I guess I'll put a wax finish on top anyway. So this is probably an unnecessary step, but at least it got rubbed down twice. Here I'm using the wax. That's 4-0 steel wool and it really takes down all your nibs and nubs and dust in your finish to give you a real nice kind of smooth hand rub finish. And then just buff it out with a towel. Voila. Then onto the base. I was using two by fours for most of the base, and I didn't want it to look like I was using two by fours as much as I was, so I joined it and played down all four sides of all the boards that I used which took down the thickness just a little bit, more the width than anything. Here you can see the rounded corners on the right as opposed to the squared off corners on the left. It really gives it more of a nice finished look. And on the front and side aprons, uh, I wanted to give it a little bit more of a decorative look, so I gave a small eighth inch bead molding bit to the bottom of them. I did use pocket holes for pretty much all the joinery around the base. And I was able to keep it that there'd be pocket holes on the back and then the bottom of the piece, but not on the front or the sides. So you can't really see any of that when it's up against the wall. Some more sanding of all the pieces before I started gluing them all together and screwing them. Just because it would be easier to sand now than later. I also wanted to have um, the front kind of recessed back just a little bit. So I had a piece of, I think it was like 3 16 of an inch or 3 8 no, it was 3 8 of an inch. Give me a good kind of a depth measure so it would sit back. So I glued and screwed. This is just me kind of assembling. One thing I don't like about pocket screws is when you go to screw it, you really have to clamp it down or hold it in place really well or else it kind of shifts on you at the end, so I get a little anal about getting everything in place and keeping it there and clamping it up.
was also doing a little designing as I went here just to see what would look best for clearance to the floor. Since I did modify the plans that I had a little bit. Not a big fan of quick clamps, but they do have their uses. And when you're trying to hold something in place and clamp it at the same time when you only have one hand to use, it's a good use for that. I did hand prime um, most of the knots, like the larger knots, and then I sprayed on primer, sanded that all down, and then this is me putting on the final coat. Um, it's um, General Finishes Milk Paint Antique White. It's tough to see with the sun going in and out of the clouds, um, but it was a nice color. And I think I thinned it a little bit with water and sprayed it with a 1.7 tip. And it worked pretty good. I think they call for a 1.8. And then attaching the top to the base, um, I got these little guys just to allow for some wood expansion. The plans were calling for pocket holes to the top. That might have worked okay, but I decided to go this route just to give it a little bit more movement. And I flipped it over and attached the base to the top. And there it is. Some glamour shots. There you can see that bead molding. Looks really nice. Here it is in its final resting place. Clients were happy, so I was happy as well. Thanks for watching, guys.